delighted to say we're joined here by, um, I can't think of anybody better to talk about football finances, Kieran Maguire, author of uh, the Price of Football podcast, sorry, co-host of that, but also author of the self-titled Price of Football. It's, uh, it's a Monday morning, we'll make allowances. <laughs> well, not as early as you've just told me, what, what was your first media engagement today, Kieran? Yeah, I, I got a phone call from the BBC overnight, so I was on, on the BBC shortly after five o'clock. Um, talking about the money, money being made at Champions League level, and we've had Forest and Grimsby and Derby since then. Yeah, yeah. So it's a busy, it's a busy day already before for the likes of me contacting you. But much appreciated anyway. But but obviously, anybody watching this will be will be very interested to get your expert analysis and take on you know the story that we we broke there before the weekend. Uh, just a reprise for anybody who's unaware of it. But uh, U.S. investors led by a. Uh, the Milwaukee Brewers owner, Mark Atanasio, um, interested in uh, potentially getting involved in Norwich City Football Club. Um, we had some pictures. They, Him and uh, a few others from the Brewers organisation, along with his family and, and, and another long-term friend and also another financier, uh, Richard Reslow, were all pictured at Car Road for the recent final Premier League home game uh, against Tottenham. Probably worth me stressing at this stage that we know that there's, there's talks ongoing, but as yet, understandably, as, as you, I'm sure, are aware, when these things come to light, you know, it's very unusual you get anything from either the football club, Norwich City in this case, or from the American end. So at the moment, you know, all is quiet in terms of official comment, but we do know that there are talks ongoing regarding potential investment. Uh, and I want to drill drill into a little bit what that might look like. Uh, but but first off, Kieran, I mean, what what is the attraction for you looking at maybe from an outside lens in, in terms of why would investors be looking at a club like Norwich City? Um, well, first of all, it, it's a lot cheaper than buying Chelsea or Manchester United because that's going to cost you two and a half, three billion pounds. Um, what the American investors like about English football is that they are they are increasingly aware of the Premier League. Um, I think we underestimate the impact that Ted Lasso has had on the American market in, in terms of increasing the awareness of the game. And, and the Americans find it, I think, very quaint. The, the degree of passion that you get in English football. But if you compare uh, how much it would cost to buy a, a an English football club compared to investing in the NHL or the NFL or, 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 or baseball, um, the prices look a bargain because an NFL club, you, you're not going to get much change out of four to five million dollars. So four to five billion dollars, whereas Norwich City, yeah, now that it's in the championship, you could perhaps buy it for, you know, if, if they sold it for 100 million, then I think all the parties would be reasonably happy. Um, and, and potentially you could get it for even less. I mean, you know, Norwich have got at least two years of parachute payments to come and they've got very saleable assets. So I think they can get a decent price for it. So, so therefore, it, it looks a bargain. American investors are convinced that we don't sell the game particularly well in terms of. Um, not not the TV rights, they acknowledge that the Premier League rights are worth a lot, but uh, in, in terms of merchandise, in terms of the, the overall commercialization of the game, many American investors are also convinced that um, virtual reality, well, Web 3.0, the metaverse, whatever you want to call it, effectively bringing the stadium to fans at their homes is a way of, of turning those fans that can't get to Carrow Road into regular money, and and if that does prove to be the case, then then you know I think I think they they can certainly pick up a bargain. So so that's that's where they're coming from. Is there anything as well in terms of let's say more general terms with with the U.S. ownership? You, I mean, I, my mind immediately goes to the Glazers, John W. Henry at Liverpool. You know th these, and that's a very pertinent one because he obviously has a baseball background as well. Is there something in terms of they're already successful U.S. sports? owners and they're looking to branch out almost diversify in terms of their stable yeah i think you're absolutely right paddy and the, the reason for that is that following the success of moneyball in baseball um, a lot of the american owners are now using a data-driven and analytical approach to other sports franchises as they see them um, they are aware of the success that john henry has had at Liverpool Football Club, bought the club for 300 million just over a decade ago, could sell it for eight times that today. Um, and, and Liverpool, Liverpool is, is powered by by spreadsheets in in terms of 
you know, identifying talent, keeping talent, the way that they monitor and train players, a lot of it is being driven by by data and sports science. If if that can be applied to other clubs, then their reasoning goes, then then other clubs can have similar success in terms of where they are now to where they can potentially go. And I'm, I'm not saying that you know, that if new new owners were coming for Norwich, we'd expect to see them in cup finals and, and Champions League, but they could certainly be you know, become another Palace or another Brighton, become established in the Premier League for a significant number of seasons. Um, and if that is the case, then then there is money to be made, um, not necessarily from sort of the day to day activities of the club, but but finding somebody else to take it off your hands. Um, so if you could buy it for 100 million, establish yourself in the Premier League, then then you're looking to sell in the region of we take a look at the deals at Southampton, um, West Brom and so on. So yeah, selling in the, in the league of you know, 220 to 250 million. That's a good return on your investment. Now, is it uh, again worth stressing? We don't we don't know the mechanics of how this may play out in the next few weeks. Um, but there is there is a you know potential scenario that maybe obviously the current majority shareholders, D. Smith, her husband Michael Wynne Jones, they maybe dilute um, their shareholding because, because there, there's a facility. And I'm interested in is this something you've heard about at other clubs where they could inject I think up to a million extra shares into the existing share model. I think the share capital issue it would be called, which in a scenario like that, you know, uh, the US investors could buy up those shares that would then become the majority shareholder. But Delia and Michael and the other current directors with shares would, would retain, albeit a smaller holding. Just in terms of the mechanics of that, is that something you've come across before, that kind of potential to do that? Yeah, yes, there's there's two ways for an investor to, to get into a football club. A, you can buy all or a proportion of the shares from the existing shareholders. There's no advantage to the club in that because that, that's cash changing hands between individuals. The second way is for the club itself to issue shares and certainly within Norwich's own constitution that that is feasible. And then the cash is is injected into the club. If we take a look at what we've seen with Leeds United, they've had the San Francisco 49ers broadly take a similar approach. They bought some shares from the owner and they've invested cash to top that up as well. Um, we're seeing with West Ham, again, an, a minority investor initially with perhaps an option to take over the club at a later date in time. Uh, and, and that can run relatively smoothly. Um, I, I think the important thing, ideally, is that if there is any deal, um, it, it doesn't involve the club being loaded with debt because what we don't want is a situation similar to what we've seen at Burnley. They were taken over by people who, who again, from, from American investors, who borrowed money against the club's own assets in order to fund the deal. And there was a clause in that, uh, in that lending arrangement that was that should Burnley be relegated, they've got to pay back all or almost all of 65 million pounds borrowed um, over the course of the summer immediately following relegation that's that's put Burnley into a into an uncomfortable position so I, I think the small print of any deal is is absolutely critical um and, and you would hope that the that uh, that the present owners of Norwich City um would be aware of that I'm, I'm certainly aware that Norwich's finance team in my opinion are extremely professional would be able to uh, you know, to, to show the merits and demerits of, of, of any uh, financial consequences of a deal. Just, just a couple of final points, Kieran. I mean, did, it was, I thought it was very interesting when you, you talked about the potential for maybe we broadly call the virtual world and how, how that might develop in terms of a, a revenue stream. But do you feel maybe with, with, with the, 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 the three-year cycles of current broadcast revenue, would owners or potential owners or investors look at that? Because we've, we've seen a lot of talk and I think it was Amazon dipped their toe in the water water in the current deal, didn't they? Netflix have been linked as well. Are they maybe role-playing this out and thinking that the next cycles of broadcast money, be, and we know it's billions of pounds currently, but that could transform it. And obviously, if you're one of those 20 Premier League clubs, clearly the dividend would, would be exponentially bigger. I, I think that the, the view in terms of domestic TV arrangements is that we've probably reached peak Premier League in its present form. At, at present, the Premier League sells the rights for 200 games out of 380. Um, and and it, likes to, it likes to keep that scarcity factor uh, to, to keep fans interested. 
and the overseas rights are continuing to grow. So, so the Premier League itself is plateauing in terms of what it gets from Sky and BT and Amazon. I don't think it's, it anticipates a lot more growth because the only way that the broadcasters can recover that money is to put up the price of subscriptions. And every time they do that, more people end up going down the pub and getting a hooky stick from some bloke they know. And, and we, we've got piracy. So there's, there's a danger of the broadcasters pricing themselves out of the market. There's still a lot of growth as far as the international markets are going. That That's for certain. Um, I don't think it's going to be the exponential growth that we've seen um, in 2014 and 2017 when, it, when, the, when both deals went up by 70%. Yeah. And just on a final point, obviously now everybody knows Norwich are back in the championship. Would, would any investor who came in feel that they need to get back to the Premier League in, in terms of making, you know, if their longer term plan is, is to, to improve the club and then sell it on again for a profit? Is that all hinged on ultimately them Norwich being back in the Premier League? Yes, absolutely. The, the the difference in revenues, even if you're in receipt of parachute payments, it, it is very significant. The average club in the uh, in the championship is losing four hundred thousand pounds a week, um, and you know, if you're any investor, you, you don't want that on a long term basis um, because that's going to eat out into your potential profits when you do sell the club. So, uh, the aim would be to 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 return to the Premier League. And then to to establish the club as a you know as a, as, as a medium sized hitter, and I think yeah we we've got to be honest that the, the Premier League itself is is you could argue that it's, it's sort of three or four different leagues that we've got we've got the greedy six, the big six, whatever you want to call them. Then there's the club such as Leicester. I think we put Newcastle in that category as well. Perhaps Wolves, West Ham, Villa, you know, clubs with with big support bases. And then you've got seven or eight clubs who realistically you're going to expect three out of eight of those to be in the relegation fight possibly each season. Um, and some are, some are on a more successful basis than others. A very, very fine point. I mean, if you're a Norwich fan, um, you know, there's, there's a fair degree of excitement because there is this sense and it's, it's well documented. Norwich have this self-funded model and it is, it's essentially they can spend what they, what they generate. And of course, people see, you know, a US investor who's, Worth hundreds and hundreds of millions, and feel that the, that the purse strings are going to be loosened. But I mean, I mean, I guess from what you're saying there, that it's it's almost more incremental um, progress that these guys would look to do rather than come in with an open checkbook and suddenly Norwich are the I don't know the Man City of the Championship. That's probably unrealistic, isn't it? Yes, I, I think we we've got to look for evolution rather than revolution, and I, I, I fully understand that some Norwich fans are you know frustrated having been in this yo-yo situation for the past few years, all that I would say is that if I was a fan, I would much rather be in their position than that of Hull City, Swansea City, Cardiff, Sunderland, and so on. Clubs that have been in the Premier League um, did drop out and then have been either skirt, yeah, they spent some time skirting at the bottom of the championship, or in the case of Sunderland, that they spent four years in League One, despite half of that time um, being in receipt of parachute payments uh, themselves. So um, Nor Norwich are in this sort of this purgatory. They're, they're you know, too good for the championship, struggling in, in the Premier League. The additional revenues or additional investment potentially could give them that, that, that bit of breathing space that you need to survive in that first season in the Premier League. But it would have to be on the case of you know, what are the terms and conditions involved? Because... I would not want Norwich to go through a similar position to what we've seen with Burnley. Absolutely, yeah. Kieran, thanks so much for your time and your insight. Much appreciated. I'll let you go. Cheers, Paddy.